When it comes to speed, especially in terms of progress, nothing can compare to the pace seen with S34, especially as it just underwent a powerful test immediately after being moved, another significant step toward Flight 8. Meanwhile, NASA and SpaceX have decided to swap dragons to bring the two Starliner astronauts home as soon as possible. And on the other side of the world, a new version of the Long March rocket has successfully launched its first mission. Let's dive into all of this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Just a few days ago, Booster 15 shook up Starbase with a powerful static fire test, marking a major step forward in Flight 8 preparations. With that milestone completed, all eyes naturally turned to the remaining piece of hardware for Flight 8, Ship 34. Before this, the ship transport stand had already arrived and was promptly moved into Mega Bay 2. By the end of February 9th, S-34 was lifted onto the stand and then transported to Massey for testing. To be honest, I didn't expect S-34 to undergo testing immediately after the move. But to my surprise, everything happened much faster than anticipated. Supporting this, a road closure schedule was posted for February 12th, with closures from midnight to 4 a.m., and again from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Initially, it was uncertain whether these closures were for Test Tank 16 or S-34, but one thing was clear. S-34 needed to complete testing soon to stay on track for Flight 8. By the morning of the 11th, the first signs of an upcoming test were evident, as S-34's flaps were deployed one by one. By the afternoon, heavy venting was observed at Massey lasting well into the evening along with the fuel loading process. Then, at approximately 8.15 p.m. Central, S-34's engines roared to life in a powerful static fire test. Thanks to the flame trench, the test was well controlled, despite the intensity. Observers estimated that six engines ignited, generating around 1,400 tons of thrust. Notably, because of the flame trench, this test lasted longer than any previous S-34 static fire, with the burn time stretching to roughly a minute, pushing the engines to their limit. A surprising moment came at the end of the test when a loud explosion echoed across Starbase. This reminded many of the post-landing sound from SN-15's successful flight. While it's unclear whether this was a minor anomaly or just residual effects of the test, it certainly sparked discussion. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. With this milestone completed, S-34 is expected to undergo at least one more static fire test, potentially focusing on its in-space reignition capability. This was a key objective tested during Flight 6, but was missed during Flight 7. If SpaceX proceeds with this additional test, it would be a crucial step in refining Starship's ability to relight engines in orbit. Visually, this test stood out in a unique way. It was conducted at night, marking the first time SpaceX has done so for a ship static fire. While the darkness obscured the surrounding scenery, it also made the test itself look even more dramatic. The contrast of the glowing exhaust against the night sky created a stunning visual effect. Truly a sight to behold. For those looking for high quality footage of this event, as always, Starship Gazer provided some of the best camera angles. If you appreciate their work, be sure to check out their X account and support them. They're consistently delivering some of the most breathtaking images and videos from Starbase. Returning to S-34, post-test inspections have reported no significant damage, confirming that the test was a success. With this, S-34 has essentially completed its individual testing phase and will soon return to the production site. This time, however, SpaceX is expected to perform even more thorough inspections on the engine system and structural components. Given past flight data, the company is taking extra precautions to address previous issues and prepare for future attempts to catch Starship with the Megazilla arms. Following these final checks, S-34 will receive key installations, including the PEZ Dispenser Payload Deployment System, a simulated payload, and the Flight Termination System. Afterward, it will be transported to the launch pad for integration testing with B-15. Overall, Flight 8 preparations are moving forward at a promising pace, making a February launch increasingly feasible. 
Of course, the final timeline will still depend on SpaceX's regulatory approvals following Flight 7, particularly with the FAA and other agencies. So what do you think? Will Flight 8 launch this month? If you're optimistic, type this month in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with SpaceX's groundbreaking developments. Besides preparations for Flight 8, Starbase has also witnessed the end of the V1 era. Yes, SpaceX has fully transitioned to V2 this year. However, one last remnant of the V1 era remained, Starship S32. At this point, it had no role to play in the program's future. So, on the 7th of February, it was moved into High Bay, where it was presumably cut into smaller sections. By February 10th, the first section, likely part of S-32's aft LOX section, was taken out. The next day, the 11th, three more sections appeared, one from the aft section where the flaps were attached, another that seemed to be the methane section, and finally the payload section. The nose cone is expected to be removed as well. It's clear that SpaceX is officially closing the chapter on version 1. Over the past year, we've seen the systematic elimination of B4, S26, B14.1, and now S32. The last remaining piece of V1 hardware is a booster. Regardless of their retirement, we must acknowledge the role of these vehicles in SpaceX's journey. Culminating in Super Heavy's landing attempts with the Mechazilla arms and the controlled vertical ocean landing of the ship. But as the V1 era ends, a new era begins, one where Starship will not only fly more frequently, but also be larger and more powerful. 2025 is shaping up to be the year of version 2. And by late this year or early next, we may even witness the first appearance of version 3. Are you ready for that? Meanwhile, NASA and SpaceX are making significant efforts to bring back the two Starliner astronauts. To prevent further delays, the two organizations have agreed to swap Dragon capsules for the upcoming Crew-10 mission. On the 11th, they announced that Crew-10 will now use the Crew Dragon Endurance instead of a new capsule which was originally planned for this mission. Endurance was initially assigned to the Axiom-4 mission, scheduled for the second quarter of this year. This spacecraft has already proven its reliability, having flown Crew-3, 5, and 7. Over the coming weeks, it will undergo refurbishment, stacking, fueling, and final integration at SpaceX's Kennedy Space Center facility before launch. Because Endurance is already a flight-proven vehicle, it is more prepared than a brand new Dragon. Had SpaceX continued with the original plan, Crew-10's launch could have been delayed, which would have had serious implications for the two Starliner astronauts who have been aboard the ISS since June of last year. Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager, commented, commented on the decision saying, Human spaceflight is full of unexpected challenges. We greatly benefit from SpaceX's commercial efforts and their proactive approach in having another spacecraft ready for us to assess and use in support of Crew-10. With this adjustment, SpaceX and NASA have now finalized a launch date for Crew-10, March 12th, earlier than the previous late March target. Once Crew-10 arrives at the ISS, Crew-9 will begin the handover process before returning to Earth a few days later. Crew-9 consists of four astronauts, including NASA's Nick Haig and Roscosmos's Alexander Gorbanov, as well as the two Starliner astronauts who have been stranded in orbit for more than six months due to Boeing Starliner's continued failures. This situation has been highly controversial, as it highlights the challenges and delays that have plagued Boeing's Starliner program. NASA and SpaceX's swift decision-making and flexibility in this matter once again underscore Dragon's crucial role in ISS operations. Let's all send our best wishes for the safe return of Crew-9. Meanwhile, Crew-10 will feature a four-person crew as usual. The team includes two NASA astronauts, Anne McLean, the commander, and Nicole Ayers, the pilot, alongside JAXA astronaut Takuya Onishi and Roscosmos' cosmonaut Kirill Peskov. As for the Dragon capsule swap, it remains unclear whether this change will affect the Axiom-4 mission. Most likely, Axiom-4 will now use the new Dragon capsule originally intended for Crew-10. The Axiom-4 crew includes four astronauts from four different countries, American astronaut Peggy Whitson, Indian astronaut Shaban Shushukla, Polish astronaut Slavitz Uznanski, and Hungarian astronaut Tibor Kapu. Let's see how these upcoming crew dragon missions unfold. 
And now for our last bit of today's update, let's head on over to China on the latest launch of a new Long March variant. On the 12th, China successfully launched the Long March 8A rocket, an upgraded version of the Long March 8. The mission lifted off at 4.30 a.m. Eastern from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center, carrying the second batch of satellites for China's national satellite constellation Guowan. Just over an hour later, the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation confirmed the mission's success. This launch marks another step in the expansion of the Guo Wang satellite constellation, which remains largely classified. Some experts speculate that Guo Wang is China's response to the US GPS system, though its full capabilities and purpose are still unknown. The Long March 8A is an evolved version of the Long March 8, which debuted five years ago. Standing at 50 and a half meters tall, it features a 5.2 meter diameter payload fairing, a takeoff thrust of 480 tons, and the ability to carry up to 7 tons into sun synchronous orbit. Originally, both the Long March 8 and 8A were designed with reusability in mind. However, China later canceled those plans and instead shifted focus toward reusability efforts on future rockets, including the Long March 9, 10, and 12. Going forward, the Long March 8 and 8A are expected to support a high launch cadence, primarily operating from Wenchang Launch Center on Hainan Island. Meanwhile, this mission marks China's seventh orbital launch of 2024. The country has set an ambitious goal of reaching 100 launches this year, with major priorities including the continued expansion of the Tiangong Space Station and further development of reusable launch systems. Well, that's a wrap for today's episode of Great SpaceX. Oh, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. This has been Kevin, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.